If I could have everybody's attention, I would like to call the March 19th, 2015 meeting of the Versailles County Board of Education to order. I want to welcome everyone, especially, I'm going out on a limb here, I think that they are Boy Scout Troop 10. Is that right? Yes. I saw their sleeves, and I thought if our sleeves are right, then I'm going to be okay. We are very glad that you're here. We know you're probably here for a badge or something. If you have any questions uh, when the meeting's over, any of us will be glad to talk to you, and we're very glad you're here. We will have um, our superior spotlights and all of that, and then we'll take a short break. So if people will just remain seated till we get through the first part of the meeting before we start the business part, we'll give everybody that needs to go an opportunity. And now I would like to ask if we could all stand. Um, Kristen Morrissey is going to lead us in the invocation of pledge. If you allow me a little leeway tonight, what I'm going to do is kind of read an inspirational story that I found. Um, it made me thought of, think of our teachers here, and it, um, it made me think of how fortunate we are in Glaston, Forsyth County. This is an excerpt by something written by Ellen Schaefer. She is the director of project management for Forgotten Voices, which does orphan care in Africa. And this is her speaking, not me. I am not a morning person, asked my family. This morning, however, I was up early, up and out the door with time to spare by 7.15. I found myself thinking, hey, look at us, we did it. We all got up and out the door early, three cheers for us. And while it was the responsibility of getting to work on time that maybe set my alarm for oh so early hour, it was the thoughts of the kids for whom I work that propelled me out of bed and into a frame of mind that was ready to tackle the day. I thought of Neatness, who lives in rural Zimbabwe she and her siblings and cousins rise at 4.45 to hopefully eat breakfast and start the several mile walk to school. I thought of Senzi in the overcrowded neighborhoods on the outskirts of the city. She wakes at 5 a.m. to cook for everyone in her house and make sure her grandparents take their medication properly. She helps bathe the young ones and sees them off to school. She then cleans the house before leaving for school at 7 a.m. There's usually not enough food for her to take a lunch to school. What profound privilege to get up early today to invest part of my life working on behalf of the children like Neatness and Senzi. These children inspire me every day, and especially on the early mornings, to make the most of opportunities presented, to serve and love my family, and to keep my eyes wide open for the ways that God desires to use me as a channel for blessing others. Please salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I thought of you. Okay, we have before us an agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. A motion by Tom and a second by Ann. All in favor? <coughs> Unanimous. Okay, next we have recognitions with Dr. Salome. Good evening. It is my pleasure tonight to be able to talk to you all about our honorees and our recognitions tonight, and it is quite a pleasure. Last month, we missed our um, superior performance, uh, excuse me, our employee of the month last year, last month, I'll get it right in a minute, and this month, so I've got two to do. I'm so excited I can't talk tonight. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to tell you about the f February one. Dee Mathis, and Dee, before I get you to come down here, um, I want to read some things that were said about you. She is the food service manager at Sharon Elementary. In the application for her nomination, these were the things that were said. Miss D is always so nice, smiling, accommodating, and always willing to help out in any way possible. She is loved by all our students, parents, teachers, and staff. As a resu result of a joint nomination by Dee and Valerie Bowers, Sharon Elementary was one of five elementary schools in the state of Georgia chosen to participate in Georgia Grown Feed My School for a Week program. Dee Mathis is a phenomenal cafeteria manager and we are so blessed to have her at Sharon. She makes special treats for the staff and even will help the classroom teacher with a cooking class project. Dee has been recognized for her work at the state level called the Golden Radish Award. The cafeteria is always picture perfect and the food options are so fresh. 
Dee goes out of her way to make sure we are treated with, to something tempting every day. There are lots of sentences about her, but I will end up with this one. Dee always has a smile on her face, no matter how busy things may get. So congratulations, Dee, when you come forward. of you who are here to support her, if you would stand and let's give them a round of applause. One more round of applause for Dee. Congratulations. The next one, the March person is Sheila Fairfield. She is a school nurse at Sony Elementary. And these are some of the things, just some of the things that were said about her. Sheila goes above and beyond. She is an invaluable resource to all the nurses in Forsyth County. To hear her name brings a smile to my face and always thankful for her support. Sheila is a very kind and patient person. She is always willing to go the extra mile for someone else. She is a valuable resource for other nurses, students, and staff. She is thorough in her evaluation of each situation and calls parents without hesitation. She also goes out of her way to find dental and eye care for our needy students. Sheila has been a wonderful part of our school for several years. Now Sheila keeps up with every student in our school. She has made it her mission to develop individual relationships with students and teachers throughout the school. And this is my favorite one. All students love she Nurse Sheila. She makes them lo feel loved and cared for and always magically makes their boo-boos better. Congratulations. <laughs> Come forward. Those of you who are here to support her, would you please stand and let's give you a round of applause. <laughs> I know we've got family next. And one more round of applause for Sheila. And thank you to Jim and Nix for their sponsoring of our awards. Next, I have the honor to recognize the North Forsyth High School Varsity Academic Team, who is coached by Amy Dykes. They are the state RISA Academic Team Champions. They are third state championships in a row. And so that's quite an awesome thing. So give them a, a round of applause as a whole group. <laughs> And now I'd like to call them by name to come get their certificate. Emma Browning. Congratulations. Thank you. Ashley Amakamura. Brianna Brinkman. <laughs> Brittany Brazillo. <laughs> Eden Dunford. Justin Ebert. Aaron Strickland. Christopher Snodgrass. 
he here? He's not here? Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Alex Norris? Not here? Give <laughs> And Matthew McClellan. Congratulations. And will those of you who are here to support and recognize them, please stand and let us acknowledge you your presence. Without your support, it wouldn't happen. So thank you for being here. And let's give them all one more round of applause. For you. <laughs> Next, it is my pleasure to recognize Lambert High School Girls Swim and Dive Team. They're the 6A state championship. And what's significant not only about that is it is a three-peat for them. They, the first time in school history, three in a row, first time in Forsyth County history for swimming and diving, three in a row, and the first 6A team in GSHA history. So quite a, a feat. So Gary Davison, principal, if you'll come accept the award on their behalf. They're swimming and diving tonight, so that's why we're not here. They're swimming and diving. <laughs> yes, he probably does want to pull it later. Yeah, he went down the road and said, can we get a pull to the pool? <laughs> Those are all our recognitions, and now we're going to have the Superior Performance Spotlight. So, I would like to call Mitch Young, Principal of Forsyth Central, to the front to introduce his group, please. They, Forsyth Central High School became a STEM certified high school this month. Yay. They are the fifth high school in the state of to do so. And the right thing for me to do is to get the STEM boss down here, or the STEM mama. <laughs> Kim Head is the driving force behind this program. So Kim, if you'll come down and bring the team down. without it, we all know that. Um, I want to take the opportunity to introduce uh, our team here. I'm going to let them introduce ourselves and then we're going to ask two of our students if they would to come up and um, they're going to talk about the program just a little bit. I'm Teresa Johnson and I teach math in the STEM Academy. David Johnson, engineering. Don Hall, media specialist. Erin Smith, math. Don Durst, math. Kelly Schuyler, science. Bill Schuyler, a bum, biotech. <laughs> Jessica Fobble, science. Jim Tozier, ITS. I win everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I win everything. I'm a student um, <laughs> in the engineering pathway. I'm Rachel. I'm in the biotechnology pathway. Just real quickly, just to let you know, um, this is our fourth year for the STEM Academy. Um, we, we pride ourselves in being able to do this the quickest of any high school in the state of Georgia. Uh, so you couldn't apply and be approved to be a STEM school until you reached your fourth year. So we're very proud of that accomplishment. Um, this team works very hard every day. Uh, we currently have 125 students in our STEM Academy and next year we will probably be close to the 200 mark. Uh, with our incoming uh, ninth graders. So uh, very challenging program. We're very proud of everything that te these teachers do every day to make sure that we put together a program that challenges, and look, not only challenges the kids, but challenges us every day. It pushes us to our limits. So we're gonna sit down and give uh, Trent and Rachel just a minute to tell you what they think about the program. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Trent Cowan and this is Rachel Fratt. I am a senior, uh, part of the STEM Academy at Forsyth Central High School, uh, and I was part of the inaugural class of the STEM Academy. 
Um, I am in the engineering pathway. There are two pathways, engineering and biotechnology, which was already mentioned. Um, and I just want to tell you guys a little bit about uh, our side of the program and what it means to me. Um, STEM is very rigorous. Uh, the courses really push us all academically, um, but it also opens up a lot of opportunities for us that we wouldn't have uh, otherwise in our school. Um, for example, a friend and I uh, were offered an internship by Panduit Corporation over the summer, which is a local uh, electronics manufacturing company. Um, and as part of that, not only did we get to experience some of the real life applications of what we're learning in our math, science, and engineering classes, uh, but we're uh, fortunate enough to launch our own product line. Um, so we have several products out on the market now uh, that last year brought the company $15,000 worth of revenue. Uh, so that's pretty exciting to be able to say as a high school student that I have successfully launched a product line in an engineering firm that is producing revenue for the company. Um, <laughs> a few other things that I want to talk about with engineering. Uh, recently we won the Engineering Inspiration Award, uh, which went to our FRC team, which is, uh, they're very large robots, they weigh 150 pounds. They're my favorite thing to do. Um, <laughs> but we won this award because of how we run our engineering program. Uh, we strongly believe in sustainability and we work with younger students uh, in all the elementary, middle, and other high schools uh, to build a sustainable program and get kids interested in engineering. Um, as the leaders of the Forsyth Alliance, which is the overarching program uh, that we do robotics under, uh, we help mentor and work with over 125 robotics teams throughout the county. Um, and we do this because we really want to get kids interested uh, from the time they're in elementary school up through middle school and high school and get them interested in engineering and robotics so that they will be more successful and interested in these STEM pathways. Um, so we recently won the Engineering Inspiration Award uh, for this level of sustainability that we have created within our program. That's great. My turn. Hi. Um, I'm Rachel <laughs> um, I'm a senior in the biotechnology pathway. Um, I am very, very thankful that I was accepted into the STEM Academy at the end of my eighth grade year. Um, a few things about the STEM Academy is that um, Trent mentioned before, it's rigorous and it's challenging, but it's worth it. Um, STEM has given me so many opportunities that I wouldn't have had without it. I am president of several um, clubs at school as well as the National Honor Society and I know that with all the things that STEM has presented me with, I would have none of that, so I'm very thankful. Um, also, I guess what I'm most proud of in my STEM Academy journey is the, our capstone project for senior year. Um, we are in the going to the Georgia State Science Fair next weekend, actually, um, Ms. Kelly Price knows about that. <laughs> So basically my project is kind of a collaboration of everything that I've learned since freshman year. Um, I worked with E. coli and I transformed this E. coli to have a gene in it that will stop the growth of cells. And it's kind of crazy and it's just about nematode worms, but overall this could have effect on potential research to the stopping of cancer. So we could potentially isolate cancer cells and stop the cancer before it spreads to other parts of your body. So it's crazy for me to think that I'm a senior in high school and I already know these ideas and can expand later on. Um, I'm going to the Georgia Institute of Technology in the fall. I'm very excited about that. Um, and actually, the STEM Academy made me realize that I would like to major in business. <laughs> 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 So my plan is to become the CMO or CEO of a biotechnology company because I feel that people at those higher levels really need to understand everything that's going on, everything that I've learned in the STEM Academy to make positive impacts and the right decisions for companies. And like I said before, I'm just very, very proud to be in the STEM Academy and I'm also very thankful that we could speak to you today. Thank you. I have to take the mic just for a minute. I went to the opening session when they had the um, interview process, and there was this board that the, the students put together about what they love about STEM, uh, the STEM Academy. And it talked about family, it talked about working together on projects, and it was more than what they were learning and the opportunities they had. It was about building a coalition, all the things that we try to do for a student profile. and teaching them how to work together. They were so close 
And they also came up with that video they did themselves, interviewing different students. And it, they, they again said similar things that these students did about how great STEM Academy was and what they got from it. And I give the credit to Kim and the whole staff. All of you have created this incredibly um, close-knit group of students that is the foundation of something that's just going to get bigger and better every year that, that it's there. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. But the kids were absolutely so impressive during that interview. And I know that's why we win the state, right? Mm -hmm. You did a great yeah. job. It's really <laughs> And now I'm just going to take this moment to say that I am a Forsyth Central alum. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. Um, Can I ask a question? Oh, for STEM. For, 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 okay. Trent, yeah. for, for Trent and Rachel, do, do, is part of your program, is there any public speaking involved at all? Because that's pretty yeah, impressive great. right there. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you have any of that in your program? So when I, when I was talking about FRC, yeah. um, Right. to um, people about what we do with our programs. We, we really focus on inspiring and working right. with these younger kids. So there's a lot of public speaking to different judges with different uh, mentors and with the students there, but there's not anything that like teaches us public speaking. Well, it's just so impressive to me to see two high school students stand up here at a podium without any notes and speak from the top, <laughs> from your head and from your heart, as well as both of you did. It's incredibly impressive. And that skill will serve you very well as, as well. Sure. Exactly. Okay. Okay, please. There are several other people who deserve some recognition. Uh, Dr. Cindy Sloan for her involvement, Kelly Price for her involvement, Valerie Hall for her involvement. A lot of people working at this office to support STEM at Central High School, and it really is a team effort. And uh, I think it was said we're the fifth high school in the state to be certified as a uh, Georgia STEM high school, and that's something we should all be very, very proud of. Exactly. Great job. At this time, we'll just take a couple, three minutes recess, and if Wait you a minute. we got to recognize you guys first. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm skipping that. Keep it on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. The, uh, school Board Appreciation Week is when again? Help remind me. Is it? Is this the week? Is this is the week? I couldn't remember if it's this week or next week. I should have known that, I guess. But I just wanted to publicly say to, to our board members, I and mean, we have a little something for them. We'll give to them at the end of the meeting. But this, I want to say publicly, this is an incredibly professional board. It's a dedicated board. It's a very intelligent board. Uh, they work very hard behind the scenes in preparation for, for all of their meetings. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of passion. Uh, it takes a lot of sacrifice because it takes time away from home and time away from work. They listen to our staff. They listen to their constituents. But the most important thing and the thing that has impressed me most since I've been in Forsyth County, I, I sincerely believe every single board member here makes every decision in the best interest of children and the best in interest of our community. And it's truly a privilege to work alongside you individually and collectively. And thank you for your service to our community. It is greatly appreciated. Thank and you. He was say, one of the best things to do is Okay, now. Yes. <laughs> she is the chair. <laughs> we um, will take a couple, three minute break, and if you want to stay for the business portion, we would love to have you stay, but if you would rather not, now would be the time that you can go. <laughs> They're going somewhere someday, I think, don't you? Yes, I do. Okay, if I can uh, call the meeting back to order. Next, we have the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. A motion by Nancy and a second by Tom. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. And then public participation. Do we have any? No public participation tonight. So next, we have the finance report with Mr. Dan Jones. Top that, Dan. <laughs> no pressure. None. Okay, tonight we've got the financial report for the month ending February 2015. Our beginning balance was 
Our receipts for the month were $17,029,000. Uh, expenditures for the month were accounts payable was $15.8 million and payroll was $11.9 million leaving us a balance of $76,375,000. Uh, this time last year, we were at $77,346,000, so we're about a million dollars less than the same time period last year. Uh, budget, we're almost 80% on revenue. That really hasn't gone up much. And uh, overall, we're at 67.5% on expenditures, so we're if it was even every month, we're just a little above that. It'd be a little over 66%, so, but we're right in line. We're okay. You can scroll, th scroll through uh, Avalon taxes. You know, we're almost 100%. We should be by the end of the year. And the same two areas that we thought would increase this year, really maybe we'll, we'll get there, intangibles and the real estate transfer. Uh, this is a list of all the checks and wires that were done for the month. We can get any information you need on that. School reports, this is for February. And all the schools reported this month. And you can see the total in all the accounts is $7.6 million. Sales tax, uh, as we expected, there's a drop off in January from the December collections. Uh, again, it was less, it's 22% down when you compare month to month. But if you look out here, we are up 11.5% over the same time period last year. So the growth in the sales tax continues. You can see the last several months, 10, 11%. Uh, that's pretty healthy growth. We like to see that. This money is invested and we earned uh, $3,532 in interest, and there's currently $32,955,000 in the sales tax. Uh, just a quick chart. You can see the big drop off, but we're still above where we were back in the first couple of years. So everybody gets their credit card bills from Christmas, and then they panic. Right. <laughs> Quit spending. <laughs> the weather's been bad, too. Mm -hmm. It has. Uh, the 2014 bond money is invested. We earned $10,500 in interest, and there's currently $90,538,000 in that account. We're using that for construction. And again, the same thing with the 07. There's 792 in interest, and you can see this is starting to come down, $6,858,000. And the 05 bond, we earned $96 in interest. <laughs> And there's 834,000 in that. Capital projects. Uh, here's the three bond accounts in our local, and they offset. And the debt service. There's currently the sales tax and the checking account, and there's 34 million 607 for bond payments. And we'll have another round of payments coming up uh, in June. So that's a report for the month. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> next we have um, action items. First, we have the Code of Conduct with Todd Shirley. Okay. Uh, just like every year uh, with the Code of Conduct, we have a meeting uh, in December where we ask the principals uh, to uh, bring information from their local school councils uh, as far as our code of conduct goes, uh, suggestions, modifications, changes. We had uh, participation this year from most of our schools, and what you see in front of you are some of the changes uh, that were recommended as well as, um, as some recommendations from Phil Hartley for um, bringing us up to date in our code of conduct. We, as always, are at a point where we're still waiting on legis legislative changes too. Um, that, that's really all that we're sitting waiting on at this point, just to maybe see how a few things are reworded. Uh, I'm going to go through just real quick and, uh, and highlight these for you. Um, most of them are, are really pretty straightforward. On page 7, we just made additions uh, with uh, an explanation of due process and the appeals process.
and those were for tribunals and discipline, obviously. And of course, there, there are corrections all the way through the Code of Conduct on the dates and small things like that. Um, on page 15, at the bottom, this was a committee recommendation to add, uh, which includes using BYOT devices to copy or share copyrighted items as part of the cheating and plagiarism. Obviously, there's over the years, there's been a spike in taking pictures of tests and things like that. So the, the recommendation came from the schools to make an addition to assist us there. Uh, some of these things are always just wording and terminology too. Uh, it was a committee recommendation on page 16 that we remove part C under the dress and grooming code of conduct. And one of the things that we're going to be looking at for the remainder of this year uh, is our code of conduct and how we're going to progress with that. We do have some feedback already from Mr. Hartley, and he'll probably be working with us to review our code of conduct uh, and the, uh, specifically the dress, dress code. But it was recommended that we take out the visible body piercings, jewelry, uh, ornamentation, things like that, because right now, if you go into our schools, we're not enforcing that. Um, it's it has it's gotten to a point where it can be challenged if it is not a disruption to our schools. So it places our administration in a position where it's it's a very sticky situation. If if you say something to a student and it may infringe on his or her rights, if it is not a disruption, so they feel like that if we just remove that. If it becomes a disruption, it's covered in other areas of the code of conduct uh, under the dress code. In addition to that, um, section E, we are seeing uh, more and more students that are wearing the tighter leggings or the spandex type pants underneath uh, garments, uh, clothing that would be appropriate. And the way the old wording was, that could be construed as not being allowed in the code of conduct. So we made just a small change that if you are wearing outer garments that are appropriate, those leggings to keep you warm or those tighter clothes up underneath those outer garments or shorts would be acceptable in the code of conduct. That makes it a little easier for our administrators too. Makes it easier when my daughter wears Thank those you. things to school too because we don't want her to get in trouble. Um, and then finally on page 25, this was a, an addition from transportation as well as a deletion from transportation. Um, they wanted the uh, board and our electronic devices including cell phones must be kept in the off mode and concealed in a pocket, book bag, or other similar carrying device while loading or unloading the school bus. I think the issue there, and, and Mr. Pitts could certainly speak to this better than me, they want the kids paying attention at the bus stop when they're getting on the bus, listening for vehicles, because we do have problems from time to time with people running our stop arms. So if the kids are paying attention, they think it's a lot safer for the kids. We removed the section uh, that says the co communication dev devices must be kept off in the bus because uh, a lot of our bus drivers feel like if the kids are listening to music or doing things like that, they may be working on schoolwork on these devices, that that's okay, as long as it does not become a disruption on the bus. And those are all of the additions. Again, we'll be reformatting and doing some things like that, but those are, those are our additions and subtractions to the code this changes? year. Changes? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yeah. No, that's good. Okay. Good changes. Thank you for mm -hmm. the leggings. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. A motion by Kristen and a second by Ann. Any more discussion? No. I'd, I'd just like, I got one thing I'd like to say is, and I know that y'all are working on this, but if y'all just continue to work that this is, uh, every school can't be uniform, but this is one thing that the county, you don't have to come back up here, that the county can be uniform about. and. If if and what you were talking about is is true, I mean I know y'all are working on that. That every school kind of does the same thing, where you don't go to one school or a parent. Well, they can do this here, they can't there because this is one thing that we can be uniform about. And I really appreciate the efforts of the safety department and the principals and everybody trying to kind of have one uniformity about it because that's one thing that we get a lot of calls about because mm -hmm. my friend has a kid that goes so and so and so that's something we really appreciate your efforts does anybody else have anything no. all right all in favor <coughs> unanimous okay next we have the 
uh, North Forsyth and South Forsyth and Forsyth Central <coughs> HVAC construction managers and rooftop replacement with Mr. Bill McKnight. Thank you. I'm glad I got to fall a ton instead of Forsyth Central still mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> that was a tough ask. <coughs> that would have been tough, wouldn't it? Um, we come to you tonight to ask you to approve a contract for pre-construction services. The first one is for North Forsyth High School. We had uh, 11 different companies uh, pre-qualified to bid it. We had three that actually turned in proposals, and I just have to tell you that all three of them were excellent. I mean, they were just all three great companies. They all did a great job of submitting. We had one company, though, that just really stood out. It was obvious that they had put a lot of time into it. They had gone to the site. They had really done a lot of research, and they really knew, knew the, the school well. And so with that being said, we are going to recommend Barton Mallow Company to provide construction management, pre-construction services for North Forsyth High School. I would recommend approval. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. A motion by Ann and a second by Tom. Does anybody have any questions, discussions? All right, all in favor? Unanimous? We had a similar situation at South Forsyth High School. We had 10 different companies pre-qualify. We also had three companies that uh, presented uh, programs to us. Um, again, all three of these companies did a great job. I, I couldn't say anything bad about any of them. Uh, they all just turned in a, a great proposals. And again, we did have one that really stood out and had a great score after we evaluated them all. And with that being said, we're going to recommend Balfour Beatty to be the to provide construction services for South Forsyth High School. Recommend approval. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Okay. Uh, motion by Tom and a second by Ann. Any questions? All in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. The next one we have is Forsyth Central High School. Uh, it's replacing um, rooftop air conditioners there. Um, this became something that we were doing our PMs around for South Central High School. We discovered that we had some heat exchangers that we were concerned about. We didn't want to go through another winter with them going through a heating cycle. Um, so we put out bids. Uh, we were lucky enough to have somebody already have our architect already working on it. They helped us put a bid package together. And uh, we had five bids. Um, it was quite a difference in the pricing and unfortunately they didn't open the low one first so I was over there about to have a heart attack mm -hmm. uh, but we finally uh, got a good one in and it was to Shoemate Mechanical who has never worked here but I have called around and checked their references and they have a stellar reputation uh, in other places so I would recommend uh, Shoemate Mechanical to do the work at Precise Central High School for a price of $453,730. Recommend approval. Second. A motion by Ann and a second by Nancy. Any questions, discussions? No, I just mm -hmm. told Bill before that, that Mr. Shoemate was one of, Roger was his first client when he forgot started back in the 70s. He was well, so that was before I talked to Ann, though. That I <laughs> <laughs> He's come a long way. <laughs> Still around. He's been around, around a long time. Nice family. All in favor? Unanimous? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Bill. And next on our action items, we have um, the GSBA. We need a delegate, and I guess I guess that would be Ann. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And um, we also I sent I forwarded you all the nomination form to be an officer. If anybody is interested in that, no interest in that because if you are, we can all we have to have a letter from us. But I just wanted to make sure. Okay. That takes care of that. And I will send your name in <coughs> next week that you're going to be our okay. representative. And that takes us to points of information. Dr. Bearden, do you have anything under that? Do we, have just to vote on do we need to vote, vote to make her the delegate? Oh, oh I guess we do. Okay. I move that yeah. Ann be our delegate at Savannah. Second. Okay. Uh, motion by Nancy and a second by Tom that Ann be our delegate. All in favor? Unanimous. Congratulations, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> Last time. 
Uh, I only have one item tonight. Uh, as you know, we are conducting a survey, survey on our inclement weather days. Uh, that survey ends um, on March 23rd. Uh, we're getting lots of responses. We've had thousands of responses, actually. Uh, I've had an opportunity to meet with my teacher advisory group, uh, my student advisory group, and receive feedback from uh, both those committees. Uh, tomorrow we meet with our parent and community advisory committee. Uh, not only uh, am I going to be discussing uh, the inclement weather days with them, uh, but we also have a representative from ITS Learning that will be there as well to hopefully answer some of the technical issues that we were dealing with over that process. Uh, when, the, when all the survey results are in, uh, we will get those tabulated. I've asked uh, Fonda Harrison to put together a committee of various stakeholder groups to go through the survey information and to make any recommendations for me for moving forward for next year. Uh, as you know, we learned a lot from that process. Uh, I think we did some things really well. I think we did some things that uh, we will probably not do again. And there are some things we certainly could do better. But any time uh, you go through something as significant as that the first time around, you certainly learn a lot from the process. And so we'll take what we've learned, take the information from the surveys, and, and put together a, uh, a revised uh, uh, proposal for next year of how we're going to move forward on inclement weather days. Because as you know, you've adopted a calendar for next year that we have zero days built into the calendar. Mm -hmm. This year we had two. So it'll be incumbent upon us to be even more prepared next year mm -hmm. than we were this year. But I'm really pleased that we're getting uh, as many results as possible because I think it gives us a very good perspective from students, from teachers, and from parents on how the process worked. And so we need to really pay attention to all three stakeholder groups. Any questions or comments about that? Okay. Okay. <coughs> Next we have um, executive session for personnel. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. second. A motion by Tom and a second by Kristen. All in favor? Unanimous. <coughs> 